said before about those inverse functions that produce a high, uh, and a hyperbola for its shape. Let's consider a very, a very, well, the most basic form of the uh, inverse function, y equals 1 over x. If I was to draw this, let's, by using a table of values, let's fill the table of values in and let's draw it. Um, who, can, who can help me fill out this table of values? <laughs> <laughs> when x equals negative 2, what is y called? 1 over negative 2. And how do we say that then? Minus 1? I don't know. Negative a half? Negative a half. Yep. When x equals negative 1? Negative 1. y equals negative 1. When x equals 0? 0. 2. Minus 2. That's a trick question. It doesn't exist. You, <laughs> you actually can't have. <laughs> You cannot have zero in the denominator of a fraction. Okay, and we're going to consider what that means a bit later. Okay? X equals one. One. X equals two. Uh, okay. So we can see something already, and I've only got a few values here for the sake of brevity. But what can we see already? Well, it's not going to cross over zero. Why? Because you can't have x equals zero. I'll get to that in a minute. What else do we see here? What do we see between these two? Positive and negative. Yeah, like there's a there's a, a symmetry to it, isn't there? Negative two produces negative half. Positive two produces positive half. There's a symmetry to it. If we're going to plot these points in, and I've only got a couple. But we're looking at um, this here, we're up here, we look at this one here, and, and we see a shape that looks like this. And over here, here, and here, and here, and we see a shape that looks like this. Okay. That's our, that's, that is our, our hyperbola. So a couple of things. What do we see? What do we see? Our scenarios before, we're only working in the positive um, uh, x and y, quadrant one, because it was a practical scenario. But here, we've now got uh, in quadrant three as well, some negative x's and negative y's. And what do we see about those two? Symmetry. Yeah, we see a symmetry. What type is it? Is it reflectional symmetry, or what's the other type we're talking about? Not reflecting. It's not here. We're reflecting this way. How do we get to there? It's like rotation. Rotational symmetry. We're talking about rotational symmetry. Yes. Okay. A rotational symmetry is, or is it an odd function or an even function? Yeah. You have fifty-fifty chance, and you didn't get it right. <laughs> I got the last one. Right. Odd function. If you remember, and you hopefully you do, that means that f of negative x equals negative f of x. Okay, when you put in the negative x value, it produces the negative function value. Okay? So our, our inverse proportion equation of this, our, our hyperbola, is an odd function. It has rotational symmetry around the center. It is uh, it is that uh, f of negative x equals negative f of x. Really important things to keep, uh, keep fresh in our minds. We also saw before, this is at this point here, where I, we, we, we said we couldn't have an x equals zero value. We also see that there is, there is a point in the graph where it cannot exist. And that's at x equals zero at the y-axis. There's another point here at the x-axis, I'll get to that in a minute. But at x equals zero at the y-axis, it doesn't exist. That means this is a discontinuous function. It, it is not continuous across uh, its whole domain. There is like a gap in it. It exists one side and the other side, but there's a gap at a point 
in this case x equals zero, where the function does not exist. Even more than that, we can talk about in having asymptotes. You guys heard of that, that word before? Yes, no? You probably have heard of it before. Let's um, refresh ourselves. An asymptote is a line, I guess a, 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 an imaginary line, you might put it that way, or a line that exists where the function approaches that line but never quite reaches it. So in this case, the axes are the same as our asymptotes, not always the case, but in this case they are. The axes, the x-axis, sorry, the y-axis here is an asymptote. This function here will get closer and closer and closer and closer to the y-axis, but will never touch it. And from this, from this side as well, it's closer and closer and closer to the y-axis, but will never touch it. The y-axis is an asymptote. The x-axis is also. This function comes down here, we'll get closer and closer and flatten out, we'll get more and more, we'll never reach it. We'll never touch the x-axis, or we'll never touch the y-axis. This will then help us understand what the domain and range of an hyperbola is. What's the domain referred to again? X. All the x values that it can be. So in this case, we've said x can't equal zero. Is there anything else that x cannot equal? No. Can x be all the way negative to infinity on this side? Yeah. All the way over here? Great. And so how do we write that? Zero is included, and the next oh. is not included. Zero is not included, so it's a circle bracket. Okay. And infinity is a different case, but that's yeah. yeah. And then it's like a U, that's right. And the uh, opposite with a uh, yeah, perfect. Okay, that means it can it can be all the way to negative infinity, and it comes to zero, but never actually reaches zero. And it also starts from zero without actually being zero, and goes all the way to positive infinity. Okay. Circle bracket put next to the zero there means it doesn't equal zero. And we actually have the same thing for the range in this case. But if it was a long function, not this, that's loss. Okay. Remember the U means, U means that both of these parts exist. You've got to add them all together to make the domain and to make the range. 